Our headlines this hour, Donald Trump is emotionally unfit for the presidency and calls for Hillary Clinton's assassination. So says the U.S. media as the Republican candidate claims his every word is being twisted. A Muslim activist sparks outrage among Italian politicians after calling for polygamy to be legalized in the country. And also ahead this RT News Hour, a World War II veteran in his 90s becomes an online sensation after a conversation with a pub owner who shared his touching story online. Midday here in Moscow this Thursday, August the 11th. You're watching RT International from the team and myself, Yuna and O'Neill. Welcome to the program. Our top story, U.S. presidential candidate Hillary Clinton's campaign continues to draw attention for the wrong reasons. After the father of the Orlando nightclub shooter who killed 49 people back in June was spotted supporting her during a rally. What kind of values we really cherish and I am proud to be on the side of those who want to build a positive, optimistic future, who want to get the economy working for everybody, not just those on the top. I was invited by Democratic Party. So it, it, it came out, I, I, I'm a member. So as, as a member, I get the invitation. So it's nothing particular about it. Come down to what kind of people we are. If that were me, this would be a headline all over the world about Trump. Uh, he's got some pretty harsh views. So I, I think it's, uh, look, it's a whole double standard, but we're punching through it. And it would seem Donald Trump has a point. Gaine Chichikan has reviewed the recent media coverage of his campaign for us to find that practically anything he says has turned into a national scandal. <laughs> Trump says if elected president, Hillary Clinton will abolish the Second Amendment, Americans' right to bear arms. He goes, quote, if she gets to pick her judges, nothing you can do, folks. Though the Second Amendment people, maybe there is, I don't know, end quote. Many in the media interpret this as, oh my God, Trump is calling for Clinton's assassination. The suggestion that someone should try to assassinate his rival well, we're talking about the headline this morning about comments that joked at the very least joked about assassination. I'm trying to put it in context. And it clearly related to violence against Hillary. Trump responded, quote, media desperate to distract from Clinton's anti-Second Amendment stance. I said pro-Second Amendment citizens must organize and get out to vote to save our Constitution. Nibor Shemalich here, someone who follows the news very closely, this suggestion in the media that Trump may have been calling for violence against Clinton or judges, was that overblown? My impression is that they really did to take the remarks too far. Interesting trivia, in 2008, toward the end of Democratic primaries, Hillary Clinton suggested she was staying in the race in case someone decided to assassinate Barack Obama. She cited the example of Robert Kennedy's assassination in the 1968 presidential campaign. Many thought that was particularly tone deaf. Neboshe, temperament is a word we hear a lot in the media these days. CNN and MSNBC often put on people who say Trump is not fit to be president. But our focus is on Donald Trump, now saying he's unfit for the White House. I'm saying that this guy's not fit to be president. He's proved it time and time again. Unfit to serve. What do you think about this focus on Trump's temperament? Well, one of Clinton's main talking points is that Trump is a man that can be easily baited with a tweet. Do you think this focus on temperament distracts from the actual policies that the candidate is suggesting? Well, of course it does. Ad hominem attacks always detract from the substance of the argument. The, I think the harder uh, the media are tr try to show that Trump's campaign is unraveling, it creates an impression that it may not actually be unraveling. It might be a, uh, an impression that they're trying to fabricate in order to... Um, Defeat. He says in order to push Clinton's agenda, but the, the, the relationship between the candidates and the media in this particular campaign is a very complex one. 
Clinton criticizes Trump for making ties and shirts and other things in China or, or other countries. Her campaign ran an ad about it. They are great ties. The ties are made in where? China? China. Ties are made in China. <laughs> The media never seemed to question the fact that it is the policies that she favored, the trade deals that have prompted businesses to produce overseas. Do you think the media questioned Clinton enough on her economic policies? They don't question her at all. Um, nobody runs 15 fact-checking articles on every word Clinton says. They run fact-checking articles on Trump constantly and mostly in a very sneering tone, to be honest. Trump has ideas that the media should really grill him over, like the temporary ban on Muslims entering the U.S. that he suggested, uh, which he then modified to a ban on refugees from countries that terrorists use as a hub. Still very questionable. But because so many of the media attacks against him seem over the top and biased, legitimate criticism of his ideas often gets drowned out. You know what else gets drowned out in the noise of Trump scandals? Criticism of Hillary Clinton's ideas and policies. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Shekhan, RT. Well, among the many criticisms leveled at Donald Trump, one of the biggest flaws found is said to be his alleged affection towards Russia, something which has caused no end of media outrage. This bromance between Trump and Putin. A man running for president. Just ask Russia to hack America. He's an unwitting agent of the Russian Federation. I think the media needs to get, take a, get a life. You know, that, and, and the people need to wake up. There, there are important issues that are hidden, but they, these are extreme, uh, you know, examples of the media getting away with it. He says, you know, people who believe in the Second Amendment, they might come to my rescue or something. And the media hounds and hounds and hounds and said, oh, not only is he a Russian spy, but he also wants to promote uh, armed rebellion and to go out and uh, kill the opponents. Well, while the mainstream media is busy bashing Trump, it's largely turned a blind eye to a scandalous statement from a key supporter of Hillary Clinton. Former CIA Deputy Director Michael Morell went on the record with a proposal to kill foreign military staff in Syria. RT's Watching the Hawks took a closer look. Morell, with a sadist delight, announced that the new U.S. policy in Syria should call for the revenge killing of Russians and Iranians. Make them pay the price by killing, killing Russians yes. and, and killing Iranians. Yes, covertly. So the, you don't tell the world about it, right? You don't stand up at the Pentagon and say, we did this. <laughs> right, because announcing your diabolical plans on the Charlie Rose show is the best way to keep things covert. But Morell's kill list didn't even end there, or didn't end with the Iranians and the Russians. He, he, he's also got his crosshairs on Syrian President Bashar al-Assad as well. Let's take a listen. I want to um, go after his presidential guard. I want to bomb his offices in the middle of the night. I want to destroy his presidential aircraft on the ground. I want to destroy his presidential helicopters. Um, I want to make him think we're coming after him. He just laid out a plan that involves the murder of, of, of innocent civilians. Yeah. Totally for horrible. revenge in order it, I'm gonna murder a murder a bunch translation uh, I want to murder a whole bunch of people and destroy a whole bunch of infrastructure and anything I can get my hands on so I can force another world leader to do what we want them to do they were outrageous comments but also alarming is that Morrell who wants a very high position in the Clinton administration is basically signaling something very disturbing that the relationships uh, between the United States and and M Moscow should uh, Hillary Clinton win uh, is going to be off to a very rough start. There has been absolutely no comment about this in the mainstream media or by the Clinton campaign, and she should be condemning this. 